sequences and series. A sequence is a pattern of numbers having a rule which governs the terms in the list. Consider the sequences A, B, and C. A is a sequence of odd numbers. B is a sequence of even numbers. C is a sequence of prime numbers. Terms mean each number in the sequence. Each sequence has a rule that governs it. Such rule may be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division with another number. For example, 2, 4, 16, 256 means you square the previous term. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 11, we add previous two terms, and so on. Determining a term in a sequence. We must establish the rule governing a particular sequence in order to determine the next term. The relationship between a term and its position on the sequence is important. In our last example, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, the first term is 1, the second term is 2, fourth term is 8, and so on. Usually, letter N is used to represent numbers. That is, in the same way we have first, second, third terms, we can have nth term. The nth term is usually in form of a formula. For example, 2n squared plus 1 means the first term is 2 times 1 squared plus 1, etc., etc. Thus, the sequence 3, 9, 19, 2, 1 is governed by the rule 2n squared plus 1. For example, the nth term of a sequence is given by 2n minus 5. Find the first, second, and twentieth terms. In our solution, in the first term, n is equal to 1. Therefore, the first term is 2 times 1 minus 5, which is equal to minus 3. We follow the same for n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 20. Arithmetic sequences. Consecutive terms differ by a fixed value in arithmetic sequences. This fixed value is called a common difference, abbreviated D. 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, 21. D is equal to 4. For the second sequence, D is minus 3. For an arithmetic sequence with first term as A and common difference D, the first term is indicated as A, second term is A plus D, third term is A plus 2D, and so forth. Note that the coefficient of D is 1 less the position of the term, that is, 50th term is given by A plus 49D. Thus, the rule governing arithmetic sequences is A plus N minus 1 times D, where A is the first term, N is the position of the term, and D is the common difference. For example, determine the 30th term in the sequence 4, 8, 12, and 16. A is 4, D is 4, N is 30. Therefore, applying the formula, the 30th term is 120. In another example, if the 15th term of a sequence is 29 and the 20th term is 39, find the first term, the common difference, 
and the 10th term. In our solution, using our formula, 15th term is given by a plus 14d is equal to 29. 20th term, a plus 19d is 39. Solving the simultaneous equations, we have d is 2, a is 1, and therefore the 10th term is 19. Geometric sequences. Here, the consecutive terms have a common ratio or multiplier denoted as r. The terms are obtained by multiplying the previous term by r. For example, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, r is equal to 2. If the first term is a, second term a r, third term a r squared, and so forth. Note that the power of r is 1 less the position of the specific term in the sequence. If n is the position of the terms, then the geometric sequence is governed by the relationship a r raised to power n minus 1. Thus, the 20th term is given by a r raised to 20 minus 1. For example, determine the ninth term in a sequence, 1, 3, 9, 7. A is equal to 1, R is equal to 3, and N is equal to 9. The ninth term is given by 1 times 3 raised to power 8. Example 2. Find the number of terms in the sequence 2, 4, 8, up to 512. The nth term is given by a times r raised to power n. a is 2, r is 2, and nth term is 512. What then is n? Therefore, we have 2 times 2 raised to power n minus 1 is 512. If we divide both sides by 2, we shall have 2 raised to n minus 1 is 256. And therefore, we can have 256 is 2 to power 8. Equating the powers, we have n minus 1 is equal to 8, and therefore n is 9. Therefore, we have 9 terms in the sequence. We move on to series. Series is the sum of a sequence of numbers. A finite series has a specific number of terms, for example, 1, 3, 5, up to 25. An infinite series has many terms that cannot be exhaustively counted, for example, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 8, and so forth. An arithmetic progression is obtained when the terms of an arithmetic sequence are added. For an arithmetic sequence, the first term A and common difference D, the first four terms are A, A plus D, A plus 2D, and A plus 3D respectively. The arithmetic progression will be A plus D plus A plus 2D plus A plus 3D. Sn is used to denote the sum of the first n terms, that is, for a sequence 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, S5 is the sum of the first five terms, that is, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. Now, for a sequence A, A plus D, A plus 2D, up to A plus N minus 1D, Sn will be given by A plus a plus D plus A plus 2D up to plus A plus N minus 1 times D. This can also be written as follows, where L is the last term that is A plus N minus 1 
times D. Adding equation 1 and equation 2 will give us Sn is equal to a half N into 2A plus N minus 1 times D. This is the formula for finding the sum of a series of numbers. For example, find the sum of the first 20 terms of the sequence 2, 6, 10, 14. In our solution, A is equal to 2, D is 4, and N is 20. Using the formula, S20 will be 800. Another example, find the sum of the following of 2, 6, 10, 14 up to 70. In our solution, this is a finite series. We need to find out how many terms are there in the series. That is, find out what n is. nth term is 70. Recall that nth term is given by a plus n minus 1 times d. Therefore, a plus n minus 1 times d is 70. If we form that equation, we'll find n is equal to 18. Applying the formula, s18 is equal to a half times 18 times 2 times 2 into 18 minus 1 times 4 and the answer is 648. Geometric progression this is obtained by adding the terms of the geometric sequence. Remember, a geometric sequence takes the form AR, AR squared, and so forth. The GP will be SN equal to A plus AR plus AR squared up to ARN minus 1. Thus, for a sequence 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, S5 will be the sum of those numbers, which is 62. Taking Sn is equal to A plus AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed up to AR raised to power 1, and multiplying equation 1 by R, we are going to come up with equation 2. Thus, equation 2 minus equation 1 will give us Sn is equal to A into R raised to N minus A, over r minus 1. That is equation 3. Alternatively, if we subtract 1 minus 2, we shall have Sn is equal to a into 1 minus r raised to n over 1 minus r. Equation 4. Equation 3 and 4 are the formula for a GP. For example, find the sum of the first 10 terms in the sequence 4, 12, 36, 108. Here, A is equal to 4, R is 3, N is 10, and S10 will be given as that, and we shall have 118,090.
One of the wonderful things about mathematics, I think, is that people are impressed. <laughs> it's often seen as a very hard subject, and so if you've done math, it's often treated as an entrance requirement, as a credential to do lots of other things. And so one idea is that some, for example, some MBA programs, the only thing they require going into it is a math, is a good solid math understanding. They can teach you all the business, they just can't teach you the math fast enough. And so I think that math, aside from obvious careers that require math, uh, if you're going to go work in a department that does uh, operations research or something like that, they'll want people with specific skills in mathematics. But math is often seen as a, as a filter, as a screen for many, many other disciplines. And so if you I guess what I'm trying to say is you can think broad because math actually is a, is a solid preparation. It's a good credential to go into lots of different fields that people often don't consider at the, at the beginning.